Do you spend all your time watching true crime documentaries in the middle of the night? Well, this video is for you. So let's dive into DNA fingerprinting. Also known as DNA profiling, DNA fingerprinting is a laboratory technique developed by Professor Alex Jeffries, which compares the DNA in a person's nucleated cells with that of the biological matter found at the scene of a crime or with the DNA of another person for identification or exclusion purposes. DNA profiling can be used in forensics, medicine, or other scientific fields. DNA is responsible for carrying the biological instructions necessary for an organism to develop, survive, and reproduce. A DNA sequence that codes for a specific protein is known as a gene and is responsible for hereditary traits. In DNA fingerprinting, the most common type of profiling involves STR typing. STRs are short repeated sequences of DNA which are highly polymorphic. The variability of STRs is the main reason why the FBI nominated 13 autosomal STR loci to form the core of what would become CODIS, a database consisting of genetic profiles contributed by local, state, and federal forensic laboratories. Now, let's put this information into perspective as a forensic scientist. There's been a crime in your neighborhood, and blood samples were found. They take the samples back to the lab where it is brought to you. Thanks to some eyewitness accounts, the police have singled out three suspects, but which one is responsible for the crime? The first step you take is to isolate the DNA from the blood through a process called DNA extraction. Restrictive enzymes are added to the DNA, cutting the DNA into smaller segments. These segments are then quantified, and the STR loci are amplified using primer sequences, part of a technique known as polymerase chain reaction that copies specific regions of DNA. Post amplification, the PCR products are separated to distinguish the STR regions through either gel electrophoresis or capillary electrophoresis. The number of repeats in a DNA sequence is determined and the resulting DNA profile is then compared to the samples of the suspects by analyzing the patterns of DNA bands. Finally, you single out one of the suspect's DNA profiles. It is a match. Eureka! You know that the polymorphic nature of the STR regions allows for heightened discrimination between one DNA profile to another. The likelihood that any two individuals besides identical twins have the same 13 loci DNA profile is about 1 in 1 billion. You have solved the case. Now, on to writing that lab report.